Okay, let's try this again for the third time. Holy crap, my phone is retarded anyways. So here today we have my Lossy 3.4, which I have disassembled. Uh, I did assemble it, or sorry, disassemble it on camera. <coughs> and then my phone glitched and I lost the video. So you guys can watch me put it back together and explain some things of what I've done to this engine. I've never run it before. Um, but it is modified with some Traxxas parts, which you guys might find interesting. Anyhow, we'll get into the Traxxas stuff first. So here is a Traxxas 2.5 or 3.3 pull starter and one-way bearing. And here is a backplate and a starter shaft for a 3.3 or 2.5. They're both the same, in case you weren't aware. Anyhow, so... This part goes into the back casing of the engine like that, obviously. And you're going to notice that this, if I get it to focus, is ground down here. Reason being is because when this piston uh, comes down, with this back plate, if it's not been filed or ground with a Dremel, if I get this thing to focus farther away, closer, maybe, I don't know. Anyways, this will hit here. So what you have to do is just carefully grind this down with a Dremel, a little grinding disc or whatever, but don't go too far. Reason being is because if you do, you'll poke a hole through this and you'll have a big vacuum leak and your engine won't run. So that's what I did there. The engine mount is for a 3.3 or 2.5 Traxxas engine. And what I had to do to make it fit was grind, make sure I'm in shot here, grind the insides of this motor mount because it's just a little bit too proud for the bottom of the engine. It's very tight tolerance in there in the sides. So I built this engine three, three and a half years ago and it's never run so um, I just took it apart today to see what kind of condition if it had been any corrosion or anything like that because it did sit like I said for three years. So we're going to put it back together on camera Hopefully, my stupid phone doesn't actually delete the video this time. Anyways, let's get on with it. So, I've had this out already. And I've cleaned it because there was some, uh, I guess, varnish-sized oil that was uh, in there from sitting for so long. So, we're going to use some of our Zap 2 after run oil. Zap after run 2, whatever. And we're going to put some on the crank pin. And, uh some of the wrist pin. These engines are discontinued unfortunately. They don't make the Lossy 3.4 anymore. Which really sucks because they're a really good engine. I know a few people that have them and they're fucking extraordinary so very powerful. This engine was never designed to fit in a T-Max. That's actually where it came out of is my one of my T-Maxes. The, uh, the crankshaft had to be cut and drilled and tapped to accept, accept this tiny little screw here in order to fit the clutch bell, which was a pretty big pain in the ass. I had my local machine shop do that for me because I didn't have the tools. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's move right along here. Apply some oil to where it's necessary. I'm not going to be assembling this engine with castor oil, reason being is because it's going to be doing a lot more sitting and I don't want it to gum or varnish on me. So, because that can happen. That was kind of what happened the first time with this engine is it sat, like I said, in my T-Max. I was going to start it and break it in as soon as I rebuilt it, but uh, life got in the way. I kind of forgot about it and put it off to the side for three years. And the castor oil kind of turn into a little bit of a goop so I just had to clean that out All right a little bit of oil on the sleeve a little bit of oil on the outside of the sleeve just to help it go in easier it's not really necessary that you do that but it's just kind of what I do and I've always seemed to have pretty good luck and this is a notched or I guess timed sleeve pinned whatever you want to call it so you have to lock or line it up with the pins you got to. Oh, fuck, I hope someone doesn't call me right now. I'll be pissed off if they do. Anyways, line up the marks and 
dry of the sleeve. Uh, let's try that again. Dry the sleeve home just like that. This engine, like I said, you can't buy it anymore. Uh, the reason why this one is new is because I actually pieced this engine together off parts, or out of parts, from eBay, which was not cheap. Uh, I don't remember how much I actually spent, but it was a little more than I wanted, but I really, really wanted a Lossy 3.4 to add to my collection, or to run in one of my trucks. So, I kind of... Such a pretty looking cylinder head, too. Bloody sharp, I'll tell you that. For cut you alive. Um, really wanted one. And I called around, called around. My local hobby shops went on eBay, went on Amazon, went on Tower Hobbies. I went to everywhere I could possibly go, and nobody had them left. All out of stock. Which was a real big bummer for me. So I noticed that there is a large number of parts still available on eBay. So I hummed and hawed about it for a while and then decided to hell with it and I bought all the parts in order to build myself this engine from scratch. The reason why I went for the Traxxas pull starter and backplate is because I was not going to pay the $100 that they wanted for the backplate and pull starter adapter kit for this engine. So I got myself a new Traxxas pull starter, one-way bearing and back plate and starter shaft for $39.99. They could keep their freaking stuff like that considering this does use an SH style pull starter and they didn't have any left. So I went with this because Traxxas pull starters are readily available pretty much any hobby shop. Okay, heads on. Now we got our little head protector thing here. I believe that faces. Which way does this go back on? I can't remember. I believe it goes this way. Snaps on, and there's two cap screws that go on the top. Like I said, this is the third attempt at this video today because people either try to call me which is annoying, or my phone has a retard moment and glitches out and then destroys my video, which I just made. Okay, so that's all back together. Oh, this engine has a lot of compression, like a lot. So, these did come with a was called a lossy or lossy ross r o s s ross system which was a uh, like the tracks is easy start basically you could uh, i've seen some people they have it set up so they put their truck on the ground they push a button it starts all by itself <coughs> the other thing to use is a hpi savage header and double up on your exhaust gaskets to make it work in a t-max big pain in the ass but anyhow so we're going to put in our back plate. This O-ring looks a little crappy, but that's okay. I'm not going to be running this engine anytime soon. Probably within a year, maybe. I'm not sure. This engine might even be for sale soon. I'm not sure yet. Like that. And our four back cover screws. And that is a 2.5 millimeter hex, just in case you guys wanted to know, but we're too afraid to ask. Like I said, this is a perfect fit. The only thing you got to do is just kind of file that back plate down, take a little bit of time, and check the fitment every now and then to make it work. Otherwise, the piston comes too far down and uh, runs into the back plate, which is just no good. Like I said, why they discontinued this engine and it's point twenty, I have no idea. Um, they should have made a kit to actually put these in tracks as vehicles because 
These are hands down way, way better than any Traxxas engine that's ever been produced. These things will snot kick a 3.3 all day long. And they don't throw connecting rods like 3.3s do. Like I said, this is made by SH, which is actually a Taiwanese company. And uh, the Taiwanese engines, I'll tell you for one thing, they've actually come a long ways in the, the way they make their engines. They're actually very good. Well, years ago, I'd never run one, but nowadays they're, they're pretty friggin' awesome and they're cheap. You can get a really good Taiwanese-made engine for around $80 Canadian. When your OS's and your Italian-made engines like Pico and Nova Rossi are several hundred. Even for a .12, they can be around $500. So there it is, all put back together. You can see that pull starter working there, and that's that Traxxas 3.3 pull starter, or for a 2.5, it doesn't matter. And uh, <clears throat> the factory Traxxas engine mount, all I had to do is take a big, well, I guess it was a, a flat bastard, not fat bastard, but flat bastard file, put my engine mount in a vise, and then file the insides of these motor feet here, here, and here. File them because they kind of they're wider at the bottom and skinnier at the top. So I kind of filed them so they're the same thickness all the way down. It didn't hurt the structural integrity at all. Um, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. And after that, it just fit right together. So um, if you guys have one of these engines or can uh, manage to find one somewhere. That's how you do it. And the factory clutch will fit. <clears throat> but like I said, for a T-Max, the older style 2.5 T-Max like mine, the front of this crankshaft was way too long. So I actually had to physically cut the end of the crankshaft off. I went to my local machine shop with the crankshaft and had them bore the center just maybe all around maybe five millimeters deep it was actually not there was a little bit of a hole there started there's enough meat in the front of the crank there so I had them bore the crank a little tiny bit and thread the inside of the crank for me which was a $40 expense plus a box of donuts for my machinist and then that way this will drop right in the other thing I was going to do um, was have a lot more machine work done to this block and by that I mean <clears throat> as you can see here there's kind of four points I was gonna make it so it was like a Traxxas engine and have these drilled and tapped and have this exhaust uh, this exhaust port kind of machined down to accept the Traxxas, Traxxas exhaust manifold um, I didn't really have the money or the patience for that bullshit so that's why I use the HPI Savage header. You have to kind of squeeze it down a little bit right here to fit fit the shot or fit in between the shocks uh, on the side of the motor or well whatever. And you have to kind of sand the bottom a little bit. And in order to make clearance down here, and you have to kind of double up on your exhaust. This isn't the best method, but this is for now how I had it set up. Um, like I said, there's going to be more machining that's going to happen to this engine, but not at the moment until I'm ready to actually use it or sell it. I don't know yet, like I said, so. Anyways, people, um, there's my lossy 3.4, or lossy, or whatever, however you spell it, or pronounce it, or whatever. Uh, just another thing that some of you already know, and maybe some of you don't know, is you can still buy this lossy carburetor brand new on eBay for around $40 and they are hands down way better than the 2.5 and 3.3 carburetors they have a larger